Listening to that song all week. <laughs> so I thank you all for playing that. Uh, good morning, Metro. Um, it's nice to see you all here today. It would have been nice if none of you were here, but it's good to see your faces. Um, I want to thank uh, Bishop and Pastor Brenda. Um, for being Bishop and Pastor Brenda, louder. Um, I want to thank them uh, for who they are um, and for everything that they've sown into my life and everything that they've sown into this community and this church. Um, and I thank them for asking me to speak I don't want to, but I thank them for doing that. Um, I uh, want to, of course, acknowledge Quincy, my husband, and Skylar, my daughter, and thank you all for being here. And so many of you all, I could thank all of you all for pouring into my life. Um, at different times and in different ways. Dr. Harvey, I, I remember when the Lord, um, I felt like he wanted me to go back to school and I was nervous and he's got such a calming way about him and um, I don't know, he kind of settled me that I was doing what the Lord wanted me to do and it wasn't long conversations, but it's like he knows how to, give you just what you need in just a few words, and I really appreciate that. Um, so many of you, Sister Christy and Jerry and Regina, all of y'all, Stephanie didn't talk to me a couple times, like all of you all, I really appreciate you. So if we can have a word of prayer, Lord, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for bringing us all together. I thank you, Lord, for um, answering the prayers of those that are on the prayer list, God. I thank you for meeting the needs of healing and restoration. I thank you, Lord, for the praise reports that are on that are on there also, Father God. I thank you for meeting the need, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are more than enough, Father God. And I thank you, Lord, that you, Father God, are in the presence of every person on the prayer list, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for their environment needing to rise up because you are there and because you are present, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for more prayer praise reports coming off of that prayer list, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for being the one who is the sustainer of life, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I pray, Lord, that you would touch every life, oh God, in the name of Jesus, even beyond these walls, oh God, that you would touch the lives of those who need you, God, and that is every one of us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that there is... Um, that your presence rests here, Father God. I thank you for your presence being with Bishop and Pastor Brenda, God. I thank you for your presence being with those who are members of the house but not here today, Father God. And Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would increase and that you would help me, God, to decrease, Lord, in every way, oh God. I pray, God, that something in this message today will bless somebody, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for, for your patience with me, for loving me, I thank you for your goodness and mercy following me all the days of my life. And I thank you, Lord, for your testimony in and through my life. <clears throat> and I also thank you for the testimony in and through the lives of everyone that's here and again, everyone that is not, Lord. May you be glorified today, Lord, as you have been through the worship, through the prayer that has gone forth, God. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Sorry, y'all, I'm a crier. Um, so, it was last year, almost a year ago, uh, Bishop asked, this is a very big stage, how you doing? Um, uh, Bishop asked me to speak last year on blended families, and I tried, uh, with the help of the Lord, to do um, just that. And then Bishop asked me to do it again. Uh, so I am here again. Last time uh, when I spoke, briefly, just a review, um, I talked about the mixes and definitions of blending. Um, I do have one thing to say, and, and, and she's not here, but I want to say it because um, the Lord told me to say it, but she's not here. Um, and I will call her afterwards. But I, I owe uh, Felicia um, an apology. I uh, offended her um, a couple weeks ago. I was not feeling being here and all of that, and I believe that I offended her. So um, I just wanted to apologize. If you're watching through video, I wanted to apologize for that. Um, so... <clears throat> Back to the uh, review. So a couple of things that I talked about was mixing, and um, there were four different types of ways to mix, and one of them was suspension, which is where things don't mix very well, like oil and water. Um, the second one was, uh, I think it's colloid, um, and that's where it mostly dissolves. Um, the example I gave, I think, was milk and water. Um, and the third was emulsion, and that's where there's a forged mixture. And then the last one was um, solution, and that's where everything mixes well. So it's like if you have salt and you have water and you mix it and you can't see the difference. Um, another thing that I talked about was who is blended and um, definitely talked about us as the church being blended at large because we have different denominations, talked about a man and a woman and all that that brings with. I'll be talking more about that today. Um, and the, one of the examples that I had back then was Joseph, Mary, and of course, Jesus. Um, blockades was another thing that I talked about, and that was um, talking about kind of all the things that we walk into marriage with when we have blended families, um, and those things that kind of make it harder for us to navigate, and then talked about things that would help us to kind of boost and help us in our relationship. Of course, things like communication. Um, I think I said something like giving a time out, um, learning how to express your feelings with the emotion wheel. I don't know if you got, I should have printed that off. Um, made a copy of that. Uh, but the emotion wheel and trying to really explain more of your emotions than just the basic one of anger or sadness or um, something like that to help your spouse and to help yourself. Um, yeah. So the next slide, if you can go to it, uh, is talking about that's why that song got me, because it was about God's love and his goodness. Um, and one of the things as I was trying to study um, for this was that God loves us so much. He's given us so many relationships where we would be able to receive the love that we need. That if, for example, like fathers, mothers with their children, right? Um, many of you all know Proverbs 22.6. Um, um, and many of us know what the scripture says about parents loving their children, but when we get it wrong, the beauty of it is, if you can go to the next slide, is that God gives us all these other relationships, that if your parents don't love you well, um, you may have siblings who love you well. If siblings don't love you well, you may get married and a husband and a wife may love you well. Um, and then the word talks about in Titus about the older, mature people training the younger people. Um, it also talks about friends, a lot of scripture on other, how we are to treat other. Um, and then, of course, the widows and the orphans, right? So it's kind of like God is already aware that we're human, that we're faulty, we're sinful. And so he combines all of these relationships just to bless us to know what love is in some capacity. And I'm so thankful for that. For me, one of the ways that it came through was um, I had my, my two daughters by two different men, and then I met Quincy, 
and that was, for me, my first marriage. Came in with my daughters, um, had history and background there, um, but God allowed me to know his love. The other thing I want to point out is that um, we would receive love through these relationships, but also when these relationships do not go the way that we think they should go, God in his amazing awesomeness shows up and loves us through it. And so even if people cannot love you well, the reality is we only need one God. He is everything that we need. He will always be everything that we will need. He will love us perfectly. He will love us when we're down. He will love us in our sin. He, he is the only one that we need really as a sustainer. So I just thank him for that. So moving on. I'm going to be really quick if y'all cannot tell. Um, fleshly blending, uh, the Lord took me to scripture. A.B., many of you all know him as Abraham. I just gave him a nickname. I don't know. Um, but A.B. decided that, you know, he, he, he well, he was A.B. Um, but he, he decided that he was going to try to blend some families, right? And... Um, I think you all know the story of um, him and Sarah, Hagar, Sarah saying, hey, use, use, this, use her, you know, go ahead and get her pregnant. I can't do it, you know. The Lord's going to bless me through her. And so they do their thing. Hagar gets pregnant, has Ishmael. Hagar, I, I think she felt good about herself because she was, you know, she had the child. Um, Sarah had a problem with it. Sarah's like, no, 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 no. You know, she's getting mad. God gets her pregnant. She has Isaac. Beautiful story. Sarah says she needs to go. That's how that blending worked, right? Um, and that was just with two women. And then we go down the list. JJ, y'all know him as Jacob. Jacob decides, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to Laban's house. I see, Ra oh man, I'm on the way. I see Rachel, beautiful. I want Rachel. I go back to Laban. Laban says, yeah, work seven years. You can have her. Um, I'm assuming that that was joyful work because he wanted Rachel. He knew the goal, right? Um, so he works and Laban says, sneaky, sneaky at night. Bloop, it's Leah. JJ wakes up, he's like, whoa, this isn't Rachel. Uh, and uh, he goes to Laban and he's like, hey, y'all know the story, hey, I was supposed to be with Rachel. And Laban goes, well, I, you know, I can't, we can't do the youngest, you know. So he works another, he gives them Rachel, works another seven years. And in the midst of that, he also has uh, Leah and Rachel's, I think they were their maids also. So this is a family with four women. All of them have children. You know how that goes. It doesn't go well. Um, and then Day Day, David, a man after God's own heart, right? I, I can't even go through all of that. I, he married Michael, and uh, I mean, there was Bathsheba. He had a lot of wives. He had concubines. He just got out of control. Um, and uh, yeah, that was Day Day. And then Solly, oh Solly, the wise Solomon. Uh, he topped everybody um, with all of his wisdom. I think he had about 370, 70 wives, 300 concubines. Um, I myself am a wife. I, I don't see how anybody would even attempt to do that, but they did attempt to do it. Um, so he had 370. So from these lineages where they, they had desires, right, to have children, I'm assuming to have fun, um, and so they blended these families. Uh, it was a lot of struggle. Um, they brought the women together intentionally, right? They had the children intentionally, but sometimes when we get married, not realizing if we've had other relationships, if we have children outside of um, marriage or even within another marriage, we're bringing these people in unintentionally because, right, um, I myself had relationships. I had experienced what I had experienced. 
And so I brought that in. I was guarded, I was hurt, um, I had a victim mentality. Uh, I wanted somebody to prove that they loved me, um, which is not a bad thing, right? But Quincy couldn't, he couldn't make up for everybody in my life. He couldn't make up for my dad. He couldn't make up for the men. Um, I told you all I had two children by two different men. There were other men in the story. Um, and so he couldn't make up for all of that. But that's what I came in with not knowing. So I look at these people and I say, why, why, A.B.? Like, why, J.J.? Why, what was wrong with y'all? But the reality is I had to realize that I, too, was the same way. I had all of my past had come into my current relationship. Um, and I mean, as far back as my dad. And I think many of us have done that. Many of us may not even be aware that we're doing that, but that is where we are. Um, and then if you think about it, like all the dynamics in those relationships, it's one thing to have a man and a woman get married and they have to figure out communication. They have to figure out, right? all of these, these different things, finances. They have to figure out uh, pleasurable times for adults. They have to figure out, right, how to deal with attitude. But when you involve all of these other people, the dynamics, it, it just explodes exponentially. And if we have a problem one-on-one, -on -one, just imagine what they had with their, their two or their four or their 70 or their 370, right? Um, that's chaotic. Nobody's needs can fully get met because, you know, you're trying to deal with kind of just what's going on. Okay, the next slide. So some of the outcomes of these fleshly blendings were unbelief. Um, you know, with, with Sarah, she, she didn't, she couldn't really hold on to what God had told her. Um, and so she tried to find another way. Uh, there was impatience. Um, right? Not, not waiting on the will of God and for his timing. There was deceit. If you go through the line, lineage of David and Solomon, uh, a lot of deceit. There was favoritism. There was bitterness and hatred and other things that came from that. There was incest. There was rape. Um, there was murder. All because people were trying to blend because of their own selfish desires. Um, yeah. So next slide, please. Uh, and one biblical example of step parenting, of course, is Joseph. Um, in Matthew 1, 18 through 19, um, it says he was just an ordinary man. He was a carpenter, didn't have anything special, didn't have um, a lot of money. A woodworker today would be pretty wealthy because we pay a lot of money for wood. Well, I don't, but people do. Um, and he would be pretty wealthy, but Joseph wasn't extremely wealthy. Um, another thing that he was, was an overseer. Um, in Matthew 119, it talks about how he was kind of contemplating once he found out that Mary was pregnant and his contemplation was, I think I'm just going, I'm going to ease out. I'm going to divorce her because I don't want to bring shame on her, right? Because everybody was going to think she's pregnant before they got married, um, and he was an overseer. And by that, I mean, he wasn't just looking out for himself. He was, he was thinking about her. He was thinking about the unborn child before he even knew that that was Jesus. Um, another thing was he was obedient. In scripture, that you see behind me that I'm looking at in front of me, um, a, there were like three dreams that he had. And, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, I need you to do this, take them, go and rise up and do it. And that's exactly what he did every time he had a dream uh, from the Lord. He was protective. He was protective of Mary and Jesus. He took them um, when he was scared of Herod and all of that, fl fled to Egypt, came back. Um, I think they went to Naz Nazareth. Uh, but he was always in protective mode. Another thing was he was concerned. Um, I, there was a story when Jesus was growing up, young, and he was gone. And Joseph being, we're going to call him a step parent, uh, actually went with Mary searching for Jesus. I think they were looking for him for like three days. 
He didn't just sit down and say, Mary, that's your kid. You, you go look for him, you know. He actually went and was looking. He was concerned, you know. Um, so these are some qualities that I believe when we're blending, these are some things that as women and as men, we need to be looking for. Somebody that's already showing us that they can be an ordinary person. Because the reality was, Joseph was an ordinary man, but he did an extraordinary thing. Um, when you think of it today, as far as men and women blending families and one of them being a, a step parent, they got to deal with like, like, like people, right? So you got to deal with the drama. You got to deal with somebody else's emotions. You got to deal with somebody being there maybe part time. You know, you, you just got to deal with a lot. The next slide. Joseph had to deal with the father of his child being I am. <laughs> uh, that's a different type of situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's the great, I mean, it's, it's, it's God, right? There is no middleman that you can, you can blame. So some of the things that Joseph did not have to deal with, he didn't have to deal with being with Mary and having to deal with her loss right, from a previous relationship. He didn't have to deal with the drama of an ex. He didn't have to deal with um, the fact that there was already a family established and he's coming in and trying to reestablish a new family. Um, but again, he, he had God being the father of his child. Although we all do that, there are humans in between that we can blame stuff on. He didn't have any of that. Um, next slide. Um, another thing was, I, I was thinking that Joseph was what we would call a step parent, but in reality, that wasn't Mary's flesh and blood. Um, so she too was housing a child that was not her flesh and blood. So she gives birth, right? Um, and one of the things about her when I was reading was, the Lord was with her, and she was fearful. When the angel came, he said, don't be afraid, because she was, uh, you know, not used to an angel, wasn't expecting it, right? Um, the other thing was she had to know the Old Testament. Um, in Luke 138, um, she, had, she had told, to, oh, I'm not even going to paraphrase because I'm going to mess it up, but she had basically said that, um, may your will, right, be mine, like do, do to me what you're going to do. So that means to me that she knew the word. Um, back then it was the Old Testament, but she had relationship with the word. Um, she was chosen. She didn't choose, uh, but God chose her, and she was humble. Um, next slide. So some key components to blend in a family. Yeah, I'm like almost done, no joke. Um, I just, really, y'all can eat and everything real soon. Um, and I don't have several closings because I don't have several closings. Uh, some key components to blending a family. Number one is trust God. Um, blending families, and this just goes for everybody. The reality is man, woman, kids involved, um, no prior relationships, um, as I said last year, we all come with stuff, right? So we have to learn in this relationship that is before us of marriage on how to trust God. Um, I, I was thinking of a, nope, I'm not going to do it. I told y'all the spaghetti thing last time. I'm not going to give y'all no more because I'll be getting, nope. Um, but I will give you all something. So I had my two daughters. Uh, Quincy didn't have any children, um, and I was used to doing things the way I was used to doing things. As a mom, I thought I was doing a really good job. I, I was doing a good job, but I, I thought more highly of myself than I should have. And once I got married, the Lord just began to reveal some things in me. It wasn't even about Quincy. He began to show me myself, sorry, and how... Um, I, I just thought highly of myself. I thought I had my stuff in order. I did not. Um, 
I'm not giving. Anyway, I didn't have my stuff in order. Uh, so there were many times where I had to trust God. There were many times just being honest. Um, I would get mad or frustrated with Quincy, and the Lord, when I would go to pray, he would talk to me about me. And so there were a lot of times where I started out being mad and frustrated with him, and then I find myself blubbering, crying on the floor, talking about I'm no good, take me, and all of that. And God's like, get up, girl, and do what you got to do, and, you know. Um, but that's how it would go a lot of times. Um, second component that I thought was good as far as Mary and Joseph um, and as far as Abraham and as far as Jacob and David and Solomon was, for us to have faith in God's timing. Um, most of them, most of those, many of those situations started because someone, a female, could not have a child. Some of those other situations started because men just wanted more and more as far as relationally. Um, but it was all because they basically said, God, hey, I'm sorry, I just realized I don't have my wedding ring on. Hmm. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. So sorry. If y'all don't know, August 3rd, this is a sad point. I told y'all I'd be getting sidetracked. August 3rd, 2003, there were some pews right here, right? And this was a day that I came, we came into church and, and me and, this is, a, this is an example, I was mad. I was so mad at Quincy. And so we were waiting for the usher to take us down and he kind of he kind of pushed, right? Because the usher was like, come on, and I didn't see it. And then I got real mad, right? So I sit down in a pew. It was the pews are gone, but it was some, it was probably like a couple rows behind you. Sit down, we sitting there listening to the word and all of that. I take off my ring and put some lotion on. I tuck my ring right here, right? But I was mad. And then at the end, Bishop asked us to stand, and so I stood it up. That ring went somewhere, y'all. It just kind of, I'm assuming it rolled down, right? I never saw my ring again, y'all. Like, it was gone. It was gone, y'all. So I got a little trauma when it comes to rings, if y'all forgive me. <laughs> um, but there was a lesson in that, right? I had an attitude. I couldn't receive what God had. I took off something that was a prized possession for me, right? It's gone. Somebody wore it. I ain't going to lie. I came up in the church probably every Sunday looking at y'all. All of y'all like, somebody got my ring. I know somebody got my ring. I, I knew it. I, I, and forgive me for thinking that about y'all. Um, I never saw none of y'all with it on, but I was like, somebody got my ring. Um, but there was a lesson in that, right? I needed, I needed to get myself right. My attitude did not need to enter into the house. And whatever it was that I was mad about, I have no memory of. None. So how important was it? How important was that? Him pushing me. I would have done anyway. Girl, I'm so petty. I need help, y'all. I need help. I need help. Um, but anyway, so have faith in this timing. That means that we have to slow ourselves down. That means that we have to remind ourselves of the things and the promises that God has spoken to us. That means that we have to go through the prophetic word and we have to really believe that, God, you said this is going to be and I'm going to wait until you fulfill it, not I'm going to do something to make it happen. Because if we look in scripture, that's never a good idea, ever. Like it never, it never, it never comes to pass the way that we expect it to. Um, the other thing is do not lean on our own understanding. That kind of goes hand in hand with have faith and his timing. Um, one of the things that I noticed about Joseph is in him being an ordinary man, he wasn't like Abraham, he wasn't like Jacob, he wasn't like David, and he wasn't like Solomon in the aspect that he did not relinquish his God-ordained position. So when Sarah, Sarai, talks to Abram and she says, go ahead and take Hagar, right? He relinquished his position. He, he oh, okay, well, you want me to do that? I'll go ahead and do it, you know, just trying to please you. Me and Hagar are going to have our little thing, right? Whatever. He relinquished his position. Um, he was the man. 
he could have said, no, we're going to wait on God. To me, a prime example of that is, sorry for calling y'all out, but Kit and Candace to me are a prime example of that. When the doctor said that they could not, they would not, right? And considering, I'm sure, other options, they stood on the word. I don't care if they were contemplating doing other things. I don't care if, if in moments they lost hope. Overall, they stood on the word of the Lord, and that young man is here today because they did what they did. A great example of what we should be doing in the house of the Lord. We should be standing. So even now, for those people who, who can't have children, those people who have been told by doctors that they cannot, we pray for you right now under the sound of my voice and those people who cannot hear. God, I pray that those people will hold on to the word of the Lord. I pray that you would help them to clean out their environments to be able to hear you clearly, God. I pray, Father God, that you would increase their faith, O oh God, in you, O oh Lord. I pray, Father God, that, Lord, those around them will intercede on their behalf, God, and strengthen them in their faith, O oh God, just like they did for Abraham, holding up his arms, Father God. I pray that we as a body and a congregation will learn how to hold up the arms in faith for our brothers and sisters, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, God, that you will help those people to not let go of the dream, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I thank you for that, God. I thank you for more evidence of miracles, oh God, of opening up wounds, oh God. Father God, of clearing the pathway of the sperm, oh God. I thank you for doing what only you can do, oh God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. We bless you, oh God, and we thank you, oh God, for you would do it for somebody so low, oh God. I knew, I know that you will do it for others, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you that you are no respecter of persons, oh God, in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for them, Candace and Kit, being an example, oh God. But I thank you, Lord, for strengthening others, God, that they too may be an example in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it, oh God. However you desire to bring them forth, we say yes and amen to you, God. And we thank you, Lord. Um, the other thing is be obedient to God. Um, I was not good at that either. Uh, but when I read the word, I don't feel bad because others were not good at that either. Um, but that was not my strong suit. Came here, we did um, premarital counseling. Quincy and I were just talking about that. Some, some premarital counseling is like, I don't know, like six weeks. Some people have 12 weeks. Uh, that doesn't seem sufficient. But the reality is I sat in premarital counseling. I gave the right answers or I gave answers where it's really what I thought, but I hadn't given a lot of thought to it. Um, and a lot of things were based off of the fact that I just, I wanted to get married, y'all. I had two kids. Did y'all hear that? I had two. Um, I wanted to get married. So there were a lot of things that I overlooked, a lot of things that I didn't allow God to deal with me about. But sure enough, after I said I do, it was, it was easier for him to deal with me because one thing that I've learned is when you're in situations where you're desperate, it is much easier to hear and to receive. Um, and that is what happened uh, after I got married. So one thing that Joseph was, he was quickly obedient to God. Like I said, when he had the dreams and the angels spoke to him, every scripture said that he would arise and he would go do it. He would arise and he would go do it. So anybody that's a step parent or a parent, uh, we are to hear the word of the Lord and to arise and go do it. Um, quickly, because distractions will come, things will come to hinder us from what the Lord has told us to do. The other thing about that is, it may not seem like a bad thing. The enemy is very cunning to present things that just, that's not a big deal. You just go ahead and, you know. But that door opens up and we open our hearts. We open our families up to sin. Uh, so quick obedience is pretty important. Next slide. Have compassion for your spouse and your children. Um, as a single parent, <clears throat> like I said, I thought 
<clears throat> more highly of myself and thought that I had done everything right. When we look in scripture, I'm sure Abraham felt like I'm obeying, you know, I'm, I'm doing what Sarah told me to do. Uh, I'm sure Jacob felt that way. You know, Laban, he was a, you know, little trickster, even though Jacob was a trickster. Um, and so people felt like I'm sure that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and Joseph, he had compassion for Jesus. Like I said, when Jesus was gone and he was looking for him, he was compassionate about that child. Um, and he went looking and searching for him. The word also says that, you know, they were amazed at how, how well people, people spoke about Jesus. That is something that we need to have. We also need to have compassion. Me being a single parent, I needed to have more compassion for Quincy coming in um, and having to deal with so much more than what he was presented before we got married, right? Dating is very easy, it's fun, it's lovely. I go back to my space. Um, but being married is something different. We're in the same home. Um, he really understands my relationship with my children. He really sees some of their, um, their hurts and their wounds, and that's a lot for him at the time, I'm assuming, to deal with. Um, another thing is to search for them beyond their behaviors. That is the thing about Joseph, right? Jesus, in his eyes, just kind of ran away. He looked beyond his behaviors, and he still went searching for him. On another level, I think that when we have uh, blended families and children are involved, we need to do more searching of the children, not searching of the spouse. Is that me? Huh? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought that was me. Um, we need to do more searching of the children, right? So we need, to, we need to, when you bring families together and children are involved, it's easier for the adults to kind of blend. Even in my sessions, I have a couple blended families and it's very easy for them, just being honest, right? They can have a good time, they can go out, they can have sex with each other, they can laugh and watch movies, but sometimes the kids are involved and they have a slower time as far as the transition. Sometimes they're trying to to, to be loyal to the parent that's not in the home while being loyal to the parents that are in the home, plus learning to adapt to the new ways that things are done with these new parent, the new parent and their, their, their uh, regular parent in the home. Um, so as step parents, as parents, when we blend families, I personally feel like we need to do more searching of the children. We need to, we need to ask the Lord to reveal their wounds to us. We need to ask the Lord to reveal places where they need maybe extra love. We need to ask the Lord how, how we need to navigate as a family and also include them in everything that they've gone through. Um, the other thing that I had up there is give step parents time to kind of bond with their children. That means not entering in and having the step parent just discipline off the top, but giving them time to kind of create a bond, to create connection with the children. Um, one of the things when I was looking in scripture about Joseph, um, sorry, y'all, I can't see. And I think it was Luke 2, 48 through 50. That was the scripture when Jesus left. And, and so Mary comes up to him and she's like, you know, Jesus, where were you? We were, you know, me and your father, we were looking for you. And he said, why were you looking for me? Did you not know? that I must be in my father's house, and they didn't understand the saying that he spoke to them. So Jesus was saying, y'all, this, you know, my father is God. I got to be doing his business. I can't be around y'all. Um, they didn't fully understand, but the thing that I like about Joseph and Mary is that even though they didn't understand, over time they came to understand. So what did that take? That took them observing and that took them listening and hearing from God to be able to fully understand um, what he was talking about. And the example of that is when, when they go to the wedding and Mary is telling them, y'all got to get ready because he's about to do something. Mary ain't never seen him do a miracle ever, ever, ever. <laughs> but there was something in her because of her relationship with the Lord, because of the things that she had seen, she had come to expect 
that her son was going to do miracles, and that's exactly what happened at that wedding. But that's because they took time to study him and to study what the father was telling them about him, and that's why I think that's so critical in blended families. Um, the other thing I wanted to say is to get a support system. Um, going through premarital counseling is helpful, but it's also helpful to get families, to get people around you, like I wish I would have done that with Dr. Harvey and them, but to get around families who also had blended families. Um, to be able to see how they operate, to be able to talk about issues that are coming up that may not necessarily come up with people who have gotten married and had their children together. Um, and of course, I'm going to say it because y'all know I do therapy, but definitely consider counseling um, or some type of mentorship with, like I said, maybe an older couple in the house or something like that where you all could talk to them. Um, I think I am coming to my close. I think I'm coming to my close. So one thing, I, another thing that I wanted to say about blended families is that Joseph came in, he had the thought of going ahead and getting the, you know, kind of divorcing her. Um, and part of his thought was, so, so, he, so the situation wouldn't bring shame on Mary. The reality is if Joseph would have walked away, Mary would have had to go through that all by herself of being pregnant, saying that, you know, no, it wasn't Joseph's and it was no man's, you know, the Holy Spirit did this to me. But Joseph actually came in and walked beside her and he was a covering for everything that she could have encountered by herself. And he absorbed some of that. Um, I think that that is very important when we are blending families to look for somebody who will absorb some of the pressures and some of the things that you're going through. I think that is the beautiful thing about Metro. When I say thank you to so many people, it is because so many people have absorbed things that I was going through, sometimes without even knowing that I was going through it. Like Sister Regina is one that I so admire and I appreciate. Um, she brings that East Coast, um, it is East Coast. It, it's an it's a East Coast flair that's kind of like, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna tell you you gonna take and do what you gonna do, um, but here it is. She's very um, honest and truthful, and I must say, at first, I think I misunderstood that because that's not where I've, I've come from, and so some of that felt very rough, and it felt like sandpaper. But over the years, I thank God for softening my heart and giving me understanding because some of that is needed. You don't need to hold my hand and kiss my boo-boos and wipe all of that away. Sometimes what I need is the truth. And I thank you for that because you've helped absorb some of the things that I was going through without even recognizing it. Sister Christy is another one. <clears throat> she, you know, she is, I remember when I, I say it all the time, like I came to Metro and I, I just thought, wow, this woman, this woman, this woman, this woman. You know there's something special about people, but when you don't know them, you don't know them. Her heart. Her heart to do an excellent work for the Lord And I know you don't always get it right. And I know you know you don't always get it right. But your heart to want to do excellence, your heart to take on things, it's hard. And you still do it with a smile. And I admire that. And you have been one who has absorbed so much for me. And I pray that the Lord will restore you because you've absorbed so much for so many people. And some of them don't even realize it. And I'm not saying it so you can get the applause of man. I know that you really want to please the Lord. And I admire that. And I thank God for you daily. 
your help leaving the church late and you'll come by and you'll give somebody a card. You want to make sure you call somebody and just tell them that you're thinking about them. Not just me. You do it for so many people. You absorb the shock. You absorb it for so many people. I admire that about you. Um, George and Val, like, it's a different type of way, but they knew me before Metro. They were part of me coming into Metro through Sonia and through Mary, but always had open doors, always had open doors. George is one who would give you, like, he'd give you whatever he had. Val was one, you know, she, I know that they've gone through things, but Val is one that always had a smile on her face. And it would help me in days where stuff, stuff was going on at work, stuff was going on with my children. Um, they've been shock absorbers when I was young and dumb, like just shock absorbers. Just because they would have conversations, they wouldn't be judgy about it. And I appreciate that. And so all I'm saying is for a church, like we got to learn how to be shock absorbers for people. And it's not just in giving and in money. I'm talking about, I'm still talking about blending. We got to blend as a church. We got to absorb for our brothers and our sisters. We got to intercede for people. We have to intercede for people. Like we got to intercede for this community. We can't lean on Bishop telling us what to do. We need to be doing that. We need to be out here in these streets. I ain't saying at night or nothing like that because y'all ain't going to see me at night. But, you know, like me walking to my car, I could speak to somebody, right? Like, like I could see somebody and say, Lord, it looks like they need a touch. Help them, Lord. Is there anything I can do? Lord, because you know me. I'm, I'm a chicken. So, you know, make it within the parameters that I can do something, right? Like, but we need to be absorbers. If we're going to blend, if we're going to be the church that God has called us to be, right, we got to learn to take hits for our family. We have to take hits for our family, right? If I come in and I get pregnant, y'all could talk, the, other, I, the, the old church that I was at when I was pregnant, I don't know if I said this, but one day I was pregnant and well, no, that was my second, this was my second pregnancy. The first one, that's a whole nother story, but my second one, I was, I, you know, the, the, at the time, the father wanted to be in my life, and I had a little more confidence with my second pre pregnancy. I shouldn't have, but I did. Um, and so I was at church one day, and I walk around the corner, and these two women were talking about me. And one of them was like, oh, she's so whorish. That's her second baby. And then made some comments about my mom. Um, and I was hurt. But guess what? I was whorish. <laughs> it was the truth, right? Um, but I think there's a way to say it. I think there's a way to go about it. And I think there's a way to be a part of a church where it doesn't feel like me against you all, right? I'm not saying to glorify the sin. I wasn't looking for them to have a celebration and all of that. But man, can you, can you just be honest that, that you had something in your life before? Like, was I the first person to see it? I'm, did I, I, I'm the first person to have a baby because I'm the first. Okay. I just, you know, can we have, again, some compassion? Some compassion. Um, but that is for us to blend. We have to do all of these things. I know that I'm supposed to be just talking about marriage. I know that. But the other marriage is Christ and his church. None of us escape this message, y'all. None of us. So when we talk about blending and we talk about um, bringing other people in because of your past, some of us have been in other churches and y'all trying to bring some of that stuff up in Metro. I don't know if it's flying, but some of y'all trying to do it, right? Y'all want it to be how to, how to nope, not going to call denominations. That's not good. It's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying I ain't going to do it. Um, but bringing other denominations up in here, bringing the way, like I'll say it for me. I came from a church. We had, it was a community church, right? And I do kind of miss that, 
right? So there are days where I come up in Metro and I'm like, man, I wish, you know, I wish we had some more old people up in here. Like, I wish we had some more, you know, some more of them people, right? That could like, I, don't, I mean, we do have old, older people, but I mean, like, at the church I was at, they was like, oh, like, I mean, like, Frederick Douglass old. Like, they was like, you know, coming in and walkers and stuff, you know. They would be dressed in white and still be, you know, being an usher at the door and, you know, but there were things that I saw and I learned, you know. And so coming to Metro, it was, it was, a, quite, it was, it was a lot younger and, and the, our church community is kind of spread, right? So, but, but we do that. We, we bring things from, from other pastors here, right? And we're looking through those eyes. So when somebody says something or does something, we thinking about pastor so-and-so, but he, he been gone. We ain't at his church no more. And Bishop and Dr. Harvey and Elder Marshall and Elder Joy, like, they're not those pastors. These are completely different men, completely different men, right? And it ain't just men, women too. Um, these are all the things. We need to have compassion for each other, right? We are the bride. We are the bride. And so we got to get this together, y'all. We got to get this together. We got to get this together. Um, and I'm speaking to myself first. I ain't even speaking to y'all. Because some of y'all could say, I ain't even seen you here. And I don't be here, so I ain't even speaking to y'all. I'm speaking to myself. I'm going to be honest, I'm speaking to myself, right? Um, really. And so I just, if I can pray, can I pray about blending, about church blending? And then you could come in and do your magnificent, just, you know, what you do after that. Okay. So, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the songs. I thank you for the worship. I thank you, Lord, that you are a good God. I thank you, Lord, as Kit said in his message before. I thank you, Lord, that goodness and mercy follow us all the days of our lives, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that you reign and you reign supreme, oh God. I thank you for the compassion that you have over us as your people, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that you are long-suffering. I thank you for your grace, oh God. I thank you that you love us unlike any other, Father God. I thank you, Lord, that when you see us, you see the blood of your Son, oh God, and you don't see us by the things that we have done, oh God. And I am the first one in line to say thank you, Jesus, because I need that, oh God. I need you to see the blood, oh God. But I thank you, Lord, that even in the midst, oh God, with sin that we have encountered and we've taken a part um, of that, God, like our ancestors, God, we've eaten of the fruits, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness, oh God, your forgiveness that wipes the slate clean, oh God. I thank you for your unchanging love, oh God, over every member of Metro, oh God over every member of, of um, the congregation of people that used to attend Metro, Father God. I pray your unfailing love, Father God, over everyone who has contributed to the house of Metro in any way, oh God. I pray, Father God, for the people who have contributed and been a part of other churches also, oh God. I thank you for your unfailing love, oh God. I pray, God, that you would show us how to blend as a congregation, oh God. That you would show us how to blend as a family, oh God. Even the term, a blended family, oh God. Give us new insight and revelation, oh God. For we never reach the point of complete blending here on earth, oh God. Lord, help us to be in the process of blending, oh God. Help us to recognize that, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, I pray for everyone in this house who has a need, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that you will meet the need, oh God. Lord, I thank you for purifying our hearts, oh God, helping us to want to do better and get more, Father God, to give, oh God, and to help your kingdom, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, God, that the fire of the Lord would fall upon this house, oh God, that you would burn away every selfish motive, oh God, 
that you would burn away every evil desire, O God, and that you would purify us, O God, that we may be one with each other and one with you, O God. I pray, God, for those who are carrying the load, O God, those few people, O Lord, who are doing the parts, O God. I pray, God, that you would give them rest in their souls, O God. Help them, Father God, in their minds to be able to hear you and to see you, O God. Help them in their hearts, O God, to, to be able to open up to you, O God. Give them rest in their bodies, O God. I pray, Lord, that the strategy of Metro will be the strategy of the Lord for Metro. In the name of Jesus, O God. In any way where it's off, O God, that you would gently lead us back to your path for this house, O God. In the name of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, for every chair here, Father God. I thank you for every bottom that will be seated in it, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, O oh God. I thank you, Lord, for a full house, O oh God. Not for the numbers, not for the money, O oh God. But so that your word, O oh God, may go deep in the hearts and in the souls of your people, O oh God. That lives may be changed, O oh God. That the community may be changed, O oh God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for it, O oh God. I thank you for your word going forth to those watching over video, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for ministering to them, oh God. I thank you for those in the house, God, that serve the community, God. They don't have titles. They're not known here for that, oh God. But I thank you for those people that do it, oh God. I thank you for every life that they touch, oh God. I thank you for the ministering hands. I thank you for the ministering feet, oh God of people who go outside of these walls, oh God, and reach the community, oh God. I thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that you would help us to blend, oh God, that you would help us to yield our will, oh God, that you would help us to be patient in your timing, oh God, that you would help us to wait on you, Father God, that you would help us to follow after peace, oh God, that you would help us to see our brother and our sister as ourselves, oh God, Lord, that we will not make distinctions within the house, oh God. Lord, that as we see somebody that is sinned, oh God, remind us of ours, oh God, so that we may not be too high and too lofty, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for bringing us back to where we need to be, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that this is a house that is served, oh God. This is a house that has changed lives, oh God. This is a house that is served and serviced the community, oh God. I pray that the works of Metro will continue long beyond Pastor Ray, long beyond any of the members, oh God. I pray for the works that are lasting, the fruit, Father God, that will never die, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you're the healer, oh God, that you're the healer, Father God. You're the healer of those, Father God, who have injury, oh God. You're the healer of those who need help in their minds, oh God. You alone are the healer, oh God. So we submit to you, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Have your way, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Be glorified, oh God. And for everyone, oh God, that is sat in the seat, Father God. And they 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 um have a word, Father God, about what I've spoken about or what I haven't spoken about or what I've done, oh God. I pray that you would give them their time up on this big enveloping stage, oh God, to be able to minister, oh God. Lord, I pray that we would hear new voices, oh God, that the word of the Lord would come from those, Father God, who do not feel qualified, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Lord. I thank you for a mighty move sweeping through Metro, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for protecting our bishop and our first lady, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for the ministry that they're bringing where they are and even to the Rock Church, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for lives being impacted, oh God. I thank you, Lord, for lives being touched, oh God. And I thank you for the imprint of St. Louis being in the states and the cities that they will be in, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. I thank you, Lord. I pray, God, that you would take this word deeper into the hearts of your people, God, and that you would expand it, God that you would expound and go deeper with it, Father God, and that you would help us as your people, oh God, to not just blend with each other, but to blend with you, oh God. May you be glorified in our lives, oh God. May you be glorified in our relationships, oh God. 
May you be glorified by our works, O oh God. From those in the, in, the, in the sound booth, to the musicians, O oh God, to the worshipers, O oh God, to the elders, O oh God, to the ministers, O oh God, to the prophetic in the house, O oh God, to the presbytery, O oh God, to the administrative assistants, O oh God, to everybody, O oh Lord, to the congregants, O oh God. May you be glorified, O oh God. Today, 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 oh God, may you be glorified. Oh Lord. I speak your peace over everyone here, oh God. And I pray for the goodness of God to consume them today. Thank you, Lord, for seeing every tear. Thank you, Lord, for helping everybody in transition. Thank you, Lord, for being there for people who don't have enough, oh God. Thank you for being there for the people who have too much, oh God. I thank you, Lord, that you are no respecter of people, oh God. But I thank you, Lord, for being the answer for us all, oh God. May we receive you in every way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, sis. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we get some on this mic? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I can hear me, but I can't. I don't know if y'all can hear me. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Y'all see what I was talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. I think. Can, I think they can hear me now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, um, sis, uh, shock absorbers. I mean, you know, <laughs> I won't be chewing on that for months and years to come. Shock absorbers. I kind of feel like that's the title of your next sermon, sis. Shock absorbers. Uh, that was just awesome. You know, I, I, I just want to kind of publicly thank you for what you did here. You know, when, when you're watching someone, it's important that you not just listen to what they say, but you also pay attention to what they do. Sometimes in the church, especially nowadays, we're a bit, you know, afraid of not appearing to play favorites. And so sometimes we don't really call out, we don't really acknowledge people in that way for fear that if we don't call out other people, they might be offended by that. But, you know, every now and then we really do need to do that. And so I want to thank you for taking the moment to affirm people because we, we really need to do that. And so thank you for that, my sister. Amen. Amen. You know, this is something that I oftentimes refer to as sort of a practical theology. You're right. If we've grown up in certain denominations, we don't think this is preaching. But, but I want to tell you today, with all the Bible that I know today, you heard just as much a sermon it may not have had the oohs and the ahs, and we didn't have no company organ, but if you lean into this information, it will transform your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. You, you know, while you were speaking, God said this to me, and it, 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 it tickled me because I know you guys don't think of yourselves this way. But, but God said to me, that's a power couple. I know... And the funny thing is that I'm not even saying it for your benefit. I'm saying it for their benefit. This is a power couple. I know some of y'all think it's Beyonce and Jay-Z. Right? You might even think it's Barack and Michelle. But, but I want to tell you in, 22, in 2022, flaws in all, background in all, not necessarily hitting it in all, right? This is what God thinks of as a power couple. 
Look at where they're at today. On this stage. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so I, I wanted to do that. Like I said, it ain't even for y'all benefit. It's going to take y'all a minute to embrace that upon yourselves. But, but, but people need to see this is what a power couple. Young people need to see this is what a real power couple looks like today. Amen. Hallelujah. How, how, how many people come from a blended family? Anybody such blended families out here? How many people know blended families? You know blended families. Hallelujah. You know, one of the, the bullet points that my sister had up here, you know, that, that, you know, everybody associated with a blended family was amen in every bullet point, right? Like, I was looking at my wife, she was this all along, right? That, that was definitely our journey. So, so we definitely related to all of that, you know, in that case. But, but one of the bullet points, and I just want to iterate this for me, and that is lean not into your own understanding. You're not qualified to do this job. That's the first thing I figured out. The smartest thing I ever figured out was that I wasn't qualified <laughs> to step parent without the Holy Ghost. Amen. And so, so the smartest thing I ever did was to not lean into my own understanding. For those of you who don't know, I have a PhD in psychology, but I was smart enough to know <laughs> that I was not qualified right, to do this job. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. Uh, um, if you've been sitting in the sanctuary, like I said, this didn't sound like a traditional sermon, but nonetheless, the Spirit of God moves even in the midst of these words. Some of you were relating to the experiences, the hurt, the pain, but, but also you heard the, the testimony of how God brought them through and is bringing them through in that case. And maybe that's kind of where you're at today. And so I want to give you an opportunity. Because all of what she talked about today does not begin until you say yes to God. Doesn't begin until you decide that I'm not going to try to do this my way. That's leaning on your own understanding. I'm not going to do it my way. I need help. For me, that's the most sincere prayer. Sometimes we make these prayers too convoluted. We make them too theologically deep. Let me tell you something. The most sincere prayer you'll ever pray is help that's a prayer. Help. And that's what I want to encourage you. That's what I want to offer you. I want to offer you help today. And if you just say that to God, I don't have a sophisticated prayer for you today. I just have that one word for you. If you will say to God, help. But here's what that means. It means that you are surrendering. If you're drowning and you ask somebody to help you, that means that you're going to surrender yourself to their help. Amen? You can't say help and then you start dictating how they're going to help you. You're going to drown. Right? But, but when you say help, right, that's a sign of surrender. And so that's the prayer that I want to give you today. Would you please bow your head, everyone? And those of you that are watching by live stream, that's the prayer that I want to encourage you. And that's just to cry out, Help. God already knows your situation. He already knows what you're dealing with. He's already knows what side of the tracks you were raised on. He already knows. He already knows. This is your opportunity to respond to that. And my prayer for you is simply that. Cry out right now to God and ask him help. 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 If you said just that much and you said it with a level of sincerity, I want to tell you that you have prayed the prayer of salvation. That's what salvation is. It's help. And so I want to encourage you that if you did that, if you made that decision, we're going to dismiss in a minute that this altar is going to be open. If you made that decision and you're in the sanctuary today, I'm going to ask you to come down and let us know that's the decision, that's the prayer that you made. If you're watching my live stream and you prayed that prayer, help, right, please let us know. There's a place on our webpage, right, all you have to do is just give us the information. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God.